If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with a budget modern deck for you. Uh, something that I find to be rather fun, and while you're working towards the deck Bogles, getting that together, uh, this does provide you with some of the pieces, and a few other cards that work in some other decks. I'll show you really quickly. First, it's called Blouses. Now, why is it called Blouses? That's one of those weird magic names, admittedly. Uh, Blouses is it's named that because I think it was SCG San Diego, if I remember correctly. It was a Legacy Open. And the winner was someone who ran a Bant Geist or Bant Hexproof deck. And he decided to call it Blouses after the Dave Chappelle sketch. And so Blouses just simply refers to a Bogles deck, but bigger. Long story short. Instead of running Slippery Bogle and Glade Covers Scout, you're running something usually in the three drop slot, like Geist of St. Traff, Troll Ascetic. In Legacy, True Name Nemesis kind of fits that role. In this deck, we run, yes, four Troll Ascetic. Mention that for a reason. This is Baby Thrun, not legendary, but and only three mana. So three two hexproof regenerate. Easy enough. Speaks for itself. And next we have this should be the biggest creature in the deck. Uh, that is Dungrove Elder. Oh by the way, uh, shout outs to Proxies for making this deck possible. I gave this deck I uh, actually gave the deck as a present to my, I uh, guess he's still my brother-in-law for a bit, and never got it back, so I had to make proxies for this deck, but I have run it on the channel before, actually, um, and I think back then I called it Mono Green Blouses as well. Dungrove Elder, power toughness equal to the number of forests you control. Well, obviously we have quite a few forests in here, as you'd imagine, and then Hexproof as well, so should be at least a 2-2 thanks to ramp or a 3-3 if you hit it on curve and then it just gets bigger and bigger as the game goes on. Uh, next we have, and this was tricky, it's either 4 Witch Stalker or 4 Solana Ledgewalker or some combination of the two. Let's start with Witch Stalker. It is 3 mana but it's a 3-3. This is actually, not counting the uh, Dungrove Elder, this is our biggest creature, uh, non-legendary creature in the deck. Starting out at 3-3 and just getting bigger if the opponent tries to play counter spells or any black spells on our turn, although thanks to Hexproof on all of our good creatures, the black spells part shouldn't be that much of an, you know, it doesn't die to Doomblade after all. It's not that big of a deal. And ain't no thing. Uh, so it's either that or Solana Ledgewalker, which is two mana and weaker admittedly a 1-1 one, one, but it has pseudo unblockability right it can only be blocked by I think it's creatures with flying or reach will stop it and which one you choose depends yes in part on your meta but also just on your style uh, as a player I suppose this just oh you'll see you'll see I don't want to spoil anything uh, next we have just a one of Thrun the Last Troll it's legendary, so we get diminishing returns from each additional one. Uh, but it's and it's four mana, so it is our curve topper. But it's so good against the control decks. Can't be countered and regenerate and hexproof. This is just too good against the control decks to not run it as at least a one of. Now these are our threats. In order to get them out, and in the case of one of these to pump it bigger, we have. Noble Hierarch, to start off, just simply our bird in this deck, but it has Exalted, so that'll help with the beats. Four of, of course, if you have them, go for it. Although, what are they now? Still, like, I think the Modern Masters one is $50 now? Jeez. Needed much more of a reprint. And then, four Utopia Sprawls. Now, why not Birds of Paradise? That's a good question. You can certainly run Birds of Paradise instead. That would give you sort of a backup plan of having a flyer you can put all of your auras onto. 
I run Utopia Sprawl because it can't be bolted. That's pretty much it. This just enchants a forest, we'll call green with it, get more green mana, and then they can't bolt the bird on turn one, so that we can more consistently get out our turn two play. Certainly not strictly better than Birds of Paradise, but it does give us that one particular out, invalidating as much as we can their removal, especially in game one. Uh, now, these are the, the creatures in the ramp. As for the actual cards that make them bigger, we start off with, of course, Rancor. S very simply, one mana plus two plus O Trample, and it has its own built-in recursion. Because our creatures have Hexproof, we don't have to worry about them killing the creature in response to our casting Rancor, at least not most of the time. And this gets silly <laughs> on our creatures. It gets so silly because, as you might imagine, we're getting them huge, which I'll get to in just a second. There's Spider Umbra, very simply, one mana, plus one, plus one, reach, and totem armor. It reads like a Billy Mays commercial. But wait, there's more! <laughs> It's one mana, but wait, there's more. Yeah, you get the idea. And for more totem armor, and for an additional effect, this is three mana for the same thing as Spider Umbra, except that you're basically paying two extra mana for Keen Sense, and you're losing the reach. So is Keen Sense worth it? I think that it very well could be in this deck, and we're putting it on yet another totem armor spell. Because our creatures have Hexproof, we don't worry about spot removal, we worry about wraths. However, thanks to totem armor, that isn't really a concern anymore. With four copies of each of these, that means that we have eight totem armor spells in the deck so far, although we'll possibly be getting to more, as I'll show you in just a minute. Now for our biggest aura, Blanchwood Armor, plus one plus one for each forest that I control. And we run a lot of basic forest in this deck. A lot. So this gets to be awfully huge. Pay three mana to double the size of your Dungrove Elder. Or to make any other creature Dungrove Elder plus. It, you give it, you enchant it with Dungrove Elder. There you go. And then I'm also running two Keen Senses, which I have considered making Boar Umbra, or taking out the Spider Umbras for Boar Umbras, or just making some combination of them. I think that Keen Sense is more important because you can run out of gas in this kind of deck, especially if the opponent does manage to deal with your board, say with Liliana for instance. And draw power like Keen Sense and Spider Umbra help us to get back into the game if that does happen. Boar Umbra just gives us another source of totem armor, and it's plus three, plus three. So, Keen Sense draws us cards. Boar Umbra protects our creature and gets bigger, but it's three mana. I don't exactly know which is right. It's been so long since I've played this deck, and when last I played it, I didn't have Keen Sense. I actually don't know what's right for it. I'd like to play test it. Or if you have any comments, any suggestions, leave them down below. So, this is the main board, 39 cards in it altogether. So, we only have 21 lands. We're going to start off, you can just make these more forest. Uh, I'm running them because, well, you'll see in a sec, it's Cathedral of War. So, upside, it has Exalted. This just gives us, with four of these, eight sources of Exalted in the main deck. That makes even tiny creatures like Solana Ledgewalker potentially potent. Now, downsides, it does come in tapped, so if you if this is what your second land would be, you can't go, say, turn one, Forest Noble, turn two, Cathedral, and get out your Witch Stalker or your Dungrove Elder. That's another reason for Solana Ledgewalker potentially being alright. Uh, it also taps for just colorless mana, and it isn't a forest for Dungrove Elder and Blanchwood Armor. However, the Exalted benefit works on all of your creatures, whereas if it were a forest, that would only buff Dungrove and Blanchwood. So, I think that it's worth it. Feel free to disagree. It's just something I'm trying. And then, forest. No, your eyes don't deceive you. That does look like a plains. Uh, this is actually a forest. Uh, forgive me if my pronunciation is way off. It is German for, it is Vad, which is forest. And you can see down here, in the rules text, 
It has a little green mana symbol down there. And if you read German, you can tell... Yeah, that's... That should be a forest. This is from German 3rd edition, what we would call revised in the States. Uh, and the, uh, let me make sure I say this correctly, the first printing of a card in a given language features that card being black-bordered. So what we had here as revised being white-bordered, because it was the first printing in German, they were black-bordered, which is why this forest has that border, even though it's revised, but, but... Uh, for whatever reason, they just made a really weird printing error. Uh, it is actually a forest. If you take this to a tournament, uh, then they will... It is a forest. The judge can look it up for you. Uh, there's actually something that a player did to try to... Uh, I'll, I'll tell you a story about this later. In, in the next video, I will tell you a story about how a jerk tried to actually get me DQ'd for playing this card. And you may think, well, why would you play a card like this? I mean, the same reason you would play with any misprint. To show off, frankly. <laughs> um, this is a very special card to me. I originally owned nine of them. I got one to give as a present to my ex, who is... Well, she's my ex for a reason. And then the others, uh, I bought eight of them all together, back when they were much cheaper. Three of them I still have. In fact, if you'll give me just a moment, let me go get them. Here they are. Alright, so these are all of the ones to my name right now. Um, one still belongs to my ex, and five of them were given to my brother-in-law, the brother of my ex. So I'm never getting those back. For all I know, they've been thrown away or burned or... I don't know, That which is kind of disappointing, kind of depressing, but these are what I have. And hopefully at some point I'll be able to get some more, but, you know, that's not... I mean, we'll get there. That's not what I'm looking at right now. Uh, but these are the lands. 17 forest... Forest. And four cathedrals of war. Now for the sideboard, I actually don't have all of the cards on me. This is being done uh, awfully late. I could just print out some more proxies. Forgive me for not. I'll put them up on screen, though. Uh, firstly, we are running two copies of Choke, because blue decks. In all seriousness, the decks about which you worry the most do tend to be the blue decks, because with the exception of Thrun, they can counter all of your creatures, um, and they have cards like Cryptic Command that can just keep tapping down your team. Obviously, that doesn't really target. Um, you know, just a lot of blue decks are combo decks, which prey on us. So Choke gives us a way out against blue decks in general. Next, for some uh, burn hate, we have Feed the Clan. Now, this is only a two of because we have some other burn hate cards. But especially if you're running Witch Stalker instead of Solana Ledgewalker, this should very readily, very easily give you 10 life at instant speed against a deck like Burn that can't really kill your creatures. Uh, Noble Hierarch. That's it. Um, their Searing Blaze looks really sad if that's the only card that it can hit. Uh, next we have four Obstinate Bailiffs. Yes, it's some Burn Hate. Gains us four life. Yes, it's a big old beater against aggro decks. Zoo, for instance. We also bring it in against or especially bring it in against Liliana decks, which give us an awful lot of trouble. Uh, one way that you can improve the deck right off the bat uh, is if you want to add Dryad Arbor to the deck. Now, when Liliana is cast, and she'll go to Edict, if you have a Mana Dork, if you have a Noble Hierarch, hopefully you can just sack her. However, and this is one reason why birds could potentially be better than Utopia Sprawl, it gives you something to sacrifice for Lily. Uh, however, if you run Fetchlands and Dryad Arbor, then when your opponent uses the Edict, crack your fetch, go and get a Dryad Arbor, and sacrifice the Arbor instead of your creature. That's something that regular Bogles does, that's something that a lot of Infect players do. I keep Dryad Arbor in my sideboard unless the meta is really Lily heavy, but that is something that you can try out if you want to make the deck a little bit less budget. 
uh, just one, maybe two Dryad Arbors. That also gives you a creature where if you don't have a creature in your hand, but you have fetch lands, you can still keep the hand without having to mulligan. Not that that's where you want to be, but especially in games two and three, after the opponent has probably sighted out a lot of their removal, you can just ride off the fact that they don't have any removal anymore. Little meta tip there for you. Now, there are a few more cards. Because we're running all of these auras, and we're not running any artifacts, we can run Mass Artifact Hate and get away with it. That's one reason why you don't see me running equipments in here. Um, now, that being the case, Creeping Corrosion is where I think we should be. The main reason is because we can ramp, and we can actually get into that on turn 3 fairly readily in a deck like this. If you cast Creeping Corrosion against Affinity, that should end the game right there. Uh, notwithstanding some thought cast and thought cast shenanigans, for, perhaps, that should end the game. Uh, you should have it in the bag. Uh, I guess Ink Moth Nexus can survive it and do some shenanigans thereafter, but y you get the, the deal. It's not usually that good for them looking forward. I am running either one Malira Silvuk Outcast and two Skylashers, or the other way around depending on what I expect the meta to be like. Because we already have two chokes, I probably go down to one Skylasher, bring it in against a, usually just Delver, um, but it's just a creature that can't be countered, to help us fight the counterspell decks a little bit. Uh, protection from blue, gets around a number of answers, and it just eats Delver decks. If that happens to be a thing in your meta, here you are. And then Malira, because Infect is a thing. Yes, I could instead have Dismember, that's more versatile. Uh, and maybe, I, maybe I'm maybe i considering my meta a little too strongly, where Infect is more dominant. Uh, I don't like playing Dismember in a non-black deck. I know in some cases it's very good, Infect being one of them. Since I'm already running green, though, if I'm going to fight Infect, I might as well use Malira, is the way that I see it. Dismember doesn't seem like it's good enough in enough other matches for me to run that instead. That being the case, feel f oh, feel free to disagree. I'm seeing in the comments right now, no, you bring it in against this deck, what are you doing? Maybe you're right. Maybe you're absolutely right, and I'm silly. But let me know. I wonder what decks, aside from Infect, you would bring Dismember in against that you wouldn't bring in, like, I don't know. Well, we're green. We don't have any mass removal, obviously. Uh, what would I be worried about? What outraces this kind of deck? Or, you, you know, whatever you have, leave that in the comments below. I'd be happy to find out and learn a little bit from you. Learn from the community. And this is the deck that I have right now. Again, very much a budget deck. When you're working your way towards building a uh, Bogle's deck. This lets you your Rancor, your Spider Umber, your Keen Sense. They're fairly cheap, obviously. Um, but they, you know, once you're getting started working your way in that direction, you know, this is something that you can build fairly cheaply using what you have. Same thing with Noble Hierarch. If, you're, if you have your Hierarchs and you're working towards the rest of, say, I don't know, an Absin deck, this is something very easy to throw together. Aside from these cards, everything else is well, maybe the sideboard stuff, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what Choke is up to these days, what Malir is up to now. Everything else is actually fairly cheap. We're talking sub-50 bucks as of the time that this is being printed. So, give it a shot if you'd like. Uh, worst case scenario, you're only down a little bit, and you still get cards that are useful in other decks. With that being said, I will see you later. Take care, Magic Community. Bye-bye.